it's a big ECAC day in Ithaca today, and I'm I'm pretty excited. Week one, ECAC rematch, Ithaca, Albany. It's bound to be exciting, and I'm really happy. Happy, that's not the right word. But I'm really <laughs> looking forward to getting into it. Um, you guys know me. I'm Jared. I'm here once again with Runes. Not sure which side of me he's on, but I'm sure he's on one of them. And Mark, how you doing? I'm doing wonderful. I uh, I'm very excited. This is a classic, honestly, for us. We've casted these this game. I don't know how many times now. It's been it's like this is our twice, third time casting. Three times, it? third. I yeah. I couldn't it's, tell uh, you. <laughs> yeah, Ithaca versus Albany. I feel like uh, this this might be a start of a rivalry. Except like, I feel like this this team was rather new. The members, at least. Yeah, yeah. They've had some roster switches since last fall. That's for er, yeah, the fall. That's when it was. Oh yeah, since last fall. That's for sure, but I'm I'm looking forward to into it, especially with this new meta that we're starting to see with all the different oh, champions, yeah. new champions. Zeri, oh, new I champions, got, new items, oh. new, <laughs> no, it's a new map ish. Unfortunately, no Chemtech Soul, but I I don't know if you want to say unfortunately. Yeah. I'm gonna say fortunately. I didn't like the Chemtech hey, Soul. I say, but for us casting, unfortunately, because casting that would have been amazing for the players. They must be praising I know. the rioters right now. Like, imagine being the rider who spent all that time making the Rengar stealth changes just to get Chemtech, <laughs> just to get the Chemtech map deleted in a week. Like, because that was a big change. The Rengar stealth, that he can now jump from stealth. I haven't, I played against yeah. a Senna Rengar bot lane and I want to play it now so bad. It's Rengar's farming mm. and on Senna you max her W and every time she uses her W, the Rengar can just like jump out of the stealth. Out of her like Yeah, I mean, thing. luckily that, that still works, doesn't it? Yeah, no, that still works. No, the Rengar, yeah, the Rengar cool. updates was not removed. It was just the Chemtech Dragon, the Chemtech Soul was taken out. Yeah, I know we may not be seeing that tonight, but that's still oh, amazing update. And seemed like you know yeah. Rengar Ivern in the bot lane. That's a classic, but you know, Love that's a classic. Camp, right? yeah. Very true. I'm wondering how. Well, I can't. I guess there's no really other like stealth that Rengar can get into other than the Senna. I don't, uh, I'm, yeah, I know, I know. We're both thinking about it now. I'm kind of think. Sure. I don't. I feel like there's there, there's not much, but I mean that's neither here nor there when it comes to our matchup today. Um, I mean, very true. I don't think we'll be seeing some Rengar. And <laughs> as we said, uh, we have Ithaca and U Albany. Ithaca is going to be starting game one on the blue side. U Albany is being to start on the red side. And I just read chat. And if Rengar was able to jump out of Dustblade self, that would be incredibly broken. But um, I would Ooh, be very that would be regardless. Cool. That'd be cool. <laughs> that would be that incredibly would be cool. Wait, but can he? Like, because I know he's he's able to jump out of stealth. So is it? I mean, technically, and he's technically it's a stealth. It, I have it, no it, idea. It, I haven't I haven't played it because there is like the, the variation between camouflage and stealth, where like his alt is stealth, I believe, and like camouflage is what the time tech was. So it's like slightly different because that's what Senna gets. It's uh, all sorts of unique. But based on okay. uh, our our matchup today. Uh, yeah, yeah. Back to the matchup. No more Rengar. On, uh, <laughs> we love Rengar here, in case you can tell. Yeah. Um, but uh, based on uh, Ithaca starting on blue side, um, I'm assuming based on you know the the the, the, the track record of the, the rivalry here that this is a, a very high stakes game here. So Ithaca won't be you know messing around with anything you know, despite the fact that we you know have far fun picks like Sydney's mid, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But um. What do you think that Ithaca will be prioritizing with their first picking in, on blue side here? In this kind of meta, so looking across the players and who they play, I'm assuming that Eli Ron, who's – oh, we're getting into draft, actually. So, uh, But as oh. we're moving to this draft screen, Perfect timing. Uh, we can see Zeri's the first one banned, but I'm thinking that Ithaca will try to focus around like power picks, like a Jinx, like a Caitlyn, like a Corky, something to really get them steamrolling into the mid to late game. I think that's probably what I would focus with. I don't know if you're – I mean, I was watching LEC earlier, and I, Quickshot said something that uh, kind of impressed me. Is that if you're in patch at twelve point two and you're not picking Corky, you're not playing the game right. So I'm assuming and that they're going to start focusing off of that Corky. Inter on the side of uh, U Albany has been playing Corky in the mid lane. It, it's <laughs> not. It seems like from his match history, it's not his go-to pick, but he's been warming it up. You know, had a game where he went one, one, and two. Amazing score there. <laughs> but you know, I mean. Um, it works, right? He works yeah, he works on it. Safety. Those That's rockets come late game. Safety. Yeah. The big one 
it's in yeah. the baby field, especially because oh, speaking of which, the quirky band coming through. All right. Which I'm surprised. Have we seen the Rakan band? We have a Rakan we, one on, trick on, I'm, on the side is, of all of them. Yeah. Uh, and Jinx being left through is also a surprise. From, also, you know, Gragas. Gragas is also up, and we know Eli Ronson playing a lot of that. I don't know if that's something he wants to blind pick. Okay, well, it's gone. Um, what? <laughs> yeah, Victor. Well, we. Okay. Victor is oh, a power pick. Huge pick left through there. Mm -hmm. Which I'm not sure if Eli Ronson plays it, so it's not much of a flex. I, but I wouldn't I think call he it a flex. Needs... <laughs> I mean, I, it wouldn't surprise me if he could play it, though. He is a very, very talented player. Well. Very true, but no, I think that'll go in the hands of Lazaga in the mid lane. Followed up with Speaking the Jinx. Of which, Jinx. So not banned away, but taken away. Makes sense. Not, yeah, that makes sense. I'm assuming it'll be matched by either a Caitlyn or a Jin from Clouds, but I wonder what they want to put with it. I mean, we've seen the Glacial Augment Janus in this patch with all the Jana bus and hitting the Jana is fan. Eight? Uh, Whoa. Okay. That, hmm. Hmm. It's not on the table. The the, the 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 ace on to Victor, ace on the Victor. See, I can, I think it could be. Oh man, I, th I, I think that could be a good. No, no, I see it being an okay matchup because like what ASO wants to do is he wants to push out the early waves to be able to roam. Wants yeah. wants to be able to roam bot, roam top, and I mean that's he's going to be able to do that over the Victor because Victor, if he's not exactly. getting any kills, isn't going to get his augments very quickly. Mm -hmm. So I think, mm -hmm. so I think that's impressive, and we're seeing an you know, Felios and a. Galio. All right, so that'll be the bot lane for the guy. Thresh. All right, even better. Thresh, yeah, I, I was like, like, all these hovers, it's gonna be Thresh. <laughs> but I, I mean, think you would assume so, right? Here. If you, because yeah. Rakan is left open, and Rakan Jinx, I don't think is like the greatest lane, but come team fights, it's wonderful having the engage, especially with the Aurelian Soul follow up. Mm -hmm. That can be huge. I mean, it what? could be huge. And think about just like the mid game roaming potential with the Rakan and the Aphelia and the Aurelian Soul already. They're going to be wanting oh, to yeah, like take over. That's a lot of pressure. But the Vi, they have the Arcane duo. The Ar <laughs> they have an Arcane. Oh, no. There's no way they just locked in Jace now, right? They wouldn't do that. But. Oh, uh, and we have Victor. Wait, we're getting the whole main cast. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> if, we, if we see Jace. <laughs> Or just a Heimerdinger hover, but um, the Heimer. I mean, there's a whole bunch of arcane characters left. I, I don't think we'll see Caitlyn though. But no, Karth. My favorite arcane champ, Karth. <laughs> my uh, favorite arcane champ. Uh, oh, speaking boy. of which, there goes the Rakan. I think I think it was a mistake from picking the Vi this early, personally. Uh, I I think Rakan would make much more sense. It works decently under the Thresh. You can have a muff mobility to dodge with the play and the hook. There goes Zen Zhao. I'm wondering what we'll see out of the jungle this game. I mean, to go into the Vi, because Vi is such an impressive jungler. Uh, I'm just trying to think of like possible matchups that could look pretty good. I mean, we, we could see something something more interesting, like more of a duelist kind of character out of, out of Sandbag, but I would assume that they're gonna save the counter pick for top lane, which Albany does. They lock in the Braum. Okay. Okay. Because of blows, very good, especially with the Vi and the Jinx able to stack it up really quickly. And it's a pretty even good matchup into Thresh because, I mean, yeah. Thresh goes in with the hook. He's just able to bonk him out of it. But yeah, and I think that oh Jarvan. Oh, I like this. I like Jarvan a lot here. I love Jarvan here. <laughs> this engage. And the follow up with the Felios so when you have the Graviton. And then imagine getting locked inside the Cataclysm with the Victoral on top of you. Ooh. And imagine how much, mo like, looking at how much mobility Albany has. I mean, it fits into that style as well. Like, the Jinx, she's going to be locked down. I mean, I guess the Braum and Vi are able to get out, but that Dragon, Dragon's not going to be able to move either. And following it up with another team fight Wombo combo champion with the Gnar. I mean, I think it's playing for the team fights here. They yeah, we are... know what the real ones to do. <laughs> It's they want to, uh, yes, yes, get some early pressure off of the Jarvan, wait for that late game to scale up. And the last pick that is coming in on the side of Albany is going to be that orange. So we have two very, very team fighty comps, two very skirmish teams that want to fight and they want to fight together. So I'm wondering 
I mean, unfortunately, because of Unleashed TP, we won't be seeing any four-minute 5v5s, but I'm assuming that we'll see a 14-minute 5v5 somewhere on the map, probably bot lane. But, <laughs> but I, we'll see I what happens. I would hold these early 5v5s uh, five out of the question. When you have an A-salt, I can imagine the whole team, you know, coming up for a Rift Tail to come fight top. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're and, very right. It, it definitely could happen. That's we'll the one thing I think happens. would be very crucial here, though. You Albany has a much better, like... Uh, team roaming potential, having a soul mm -hmm. where Victor will be locked under his tower while he's scaling up. Uh, he is... will be, he will be indeed. We're going to take a quick break for uh, competitive integrity though. And we'll be back with a game one in just a moment. Stay tuned.
guys, well, here we are, getting into game one, looking across runes. Nothing super, super fancy. We did see Manoir's option into that uh, app shock over the Glacier Augment, looking for more of the tanky stats rather than the slow. I mean, I don't, I don't disagree with that. I've seen both work. I don't, I don't know. I don't have personally have a preference. I can't say I play much Thresh, but um yeah i agree the uh i think aftershock in this situation is better because they're aiming towards team fights rather than a pick team mm -hmm. i mean yeah i made team fights yikes they have a lot of a lot of team fight presence that's just very yeah. i mean to be fair both are good in either situation yeah yeah i don't look champion <laughs> I don't think it matters too much. What, what does kind of surprise me though is that Orn opted in for the grasp. And I mean, I know a grasp normally isn't like a. It's usually the go to for Orn, but like, I don't. I kind of am questionable against it in this ranged matchup just because, like, when is he going to proc it? Oop, Ooh, flash, flash the ace. Already burned. Successful already gank. Burned. But. Um, Jarvin doing Jarvin thing. He is, but like, when is when is Orn going to proc his grasp on the Norn? You know, that's just like my thought process. It's, but, you want to see a, 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 you have to just see you know, make a mistake in order to get Orn parking his grasp. It's like, if we if we could do like a grasp counter, Gnar will be significantly more than Orn ever will. I mean, yeah, very true. And I don't know, Nor Orn is the assassin mage, warlock, wizard, tank, bruiser, assassin, all the other <laughs> words I don't, champion, yeah, so. Every class nigga. He scales, right? He's he's not here for the early game anyway, so I suppose the grass would be helpful for that late game, but certainly. And uh, you know as we talked about though, we do want to see this A Soul getting his push prior early and then immediately roaming. So far he has prior for his jungler. We see that uh Vi is taking the Raptors, doing invading as she should. She knows the uh, Jarvan went top side after coming mid, and it looks like even the Jarvan might be coming towards top. Uh, he does get, Sandbag does get spotted out in that ward though, so not this time. But I mean, Reaper's going to be able to take a whole lot, a whole lot of CS from uh, from that Jarvan. I mean, I suppose the Jarvan isn't super creep dependent, but it is yeah, important to notice. I mean, getting that level six is a valuable point for these teams. That kind of goes in the going to be used. And there goes that grass box for you. And yeah, he is, he's making it work. And oh my goodness, he takes a ton of damage from Sandbag out. But we are looking to a fight in the bot lane where Vi is there. Clouds is able to take the lantern. He does get out to safety. He doesn't even have to use the heal even. So just blowing the two flashes for the... I mean, yes, you lose, lose your flash, but I'd say they're lucky to have their lives. I'm, I'm going to call that a win. But Oh yeah. I mean, it's a win for... Uh, guess both sides you made it out alive and you also get the flashes but that yeah. just means that Vi will be coming back <laughs> oh yes no this, they got to be very careful over the next few minutes and i'm assuming i'm looking at things now asol will be back as soon as he's low on mana and then when vi comes back he's gonna have a dragon buddy <laughs> yeah dragon buddy ready to roam around the map with and do wreak mayhem across everywhere So one thing I am noticing though so far is that Azeroth, Azeroth, I'm gonna say Azeroth, Azeroth really likes his roams. And he's, mm. I mean, he's already made a trip mid, he made the trip from bot to mid level two, and then it came all the way back bot, and now we're seeing him top side, and it's, I mean, Jinx may fall behind on CS, although she isn't right now, but she's going to get a whole lot of extra XP that Clouds isn't gonna have, which is something valuable, especially on a hyper carry champion like that Jinx. No, certainly. And now the question is, will Manuel be able to max the drone? Or will he be able to take advantage of the Jinx? That's just you, what you gotta do when you see the support just not being in the lane. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, gotta try to take advantage of that. And Jinx did take cleanse, so it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to kill her. She can stop that CC from happening. But I mean, she can't cleanse the Thresh, the Thresh, uh, the Flake, so. She gets hit with the hook, just, well, I suppose you just have to cleanse Flash instantly and hope you don't get hit by the flay, but. <laughs> well, you do have to watch out for the Ophelios. He does have the triple gun right now, so the Graviton will be available to root her and play it. Which, as we know, Thresh and Ophelios, a very classic bot lane combo for their CC and safety. 
Yep. Thresh able to keep Ophelia safe from all those high mobility characters with the low mobility that he has. And uh, with uh, this priority, uh, you Aubrey is able to rotate over this early drag and get themselves an infernal. Yep. Starting off strong, not too much Ithaca can really do with it. They had to four members around, priority in both the mid and the box side, able to rotate quickly to grab the objective. And just looking at this game so far, it's even in most areas, actually it's not. <laughs> there. Oh, speaking of which, we have a nice fight coming up the top side. We do. Nar hit six and instantly decided to go in. But here comes the one corner as it comes down. It does land on the Nars. He goes mini, but it should not matter. Oh my goodness, that was a lot closer than it should have been. But that is first blood for Eli Ron. That flash, flashing through the, 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 the last strong hit of the brittle uh -oh. W from Orn. Ah, uh, who gets out of this one? Vi is on the chase. Vi does flash. He does have a Q available. Eli Ron trying to outplay the dive and oh, one auto off from getting the kill. Vi survives. All right. So there is a trade. That's big. But notice that Eli Ron is up 20 CS. I mean, his wave is going to be pushing towards the Orn, who opted not to use TP in this circumstance. But he's going to be. Um, that Orn is falling way, way behind at the moment. Yeah, Reaper's going to have to be very active and make sure that either. You play around some side of the map that isn't Orn, or just get Orn into the game because he will be playing from behind this entire game. I mean, it, he is a man for goes and takes some hand. Yeah. As an Orn player myself, I feel for uh, Mr. Andy in the top lane. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Brian told you his outplay button right? there. Yes. <laughs> Need himself away. <laughs> Such an interesting ability. I don't know. Yeah, I it's find really it incredibly valuable. And uh, I have a friend who's an ASL player, and the meta on ASL right now is even. You know how you can make the sun huge, right? When you're uh, mm -hmm. what, flying out using his E, you can use the E and Q combo to get the really big sun. So the meta on ASL right now actually isn't to do that which is strange. The meta right now is to use it last second, just keep it small, but the whole purpose is to like, guarantee the hit. And I, I and guess that's what Ace Soul players are doing right now. Yeah, I'm, I don't understand the purpose too much, but I know that's what people are looking, looking to do at the moment. But hmm. well, well, we see a lane swap here. An interesting little swam swap. It looks like Ithaca's trying to get this Rift Herald on spawn. I mean, I, they already did get it, I just, he must be blind, but I mean the lane swap is coming out to fruition. Uh, the Jinx is left all alone in the side lane. I mean it's gonna, is able to get more members towards that Drake and or towards that objective. And I'm assuming they're gonna try to get some more gold on this Felios, right? Get the Felios as much gold as possible so we can start being 500 years strong as soon as the 500 oh, years yeah. come. And he's got the red and white gun. So it is, uh, you know, time for him to oh, time for him to get hit by an orange one. Yeah, time to get solo killed by Norm. Look at all holy, that. Holy. Yeah, I mean, he did use heal, but the healing mixed with the red gun is unfortunate. But Orn is able to take out clouds. It is a little bit, a little bit yeah. of a blunder, they say. But so yeah, a little bit of a over under, like you know, not estimating how much damage Orn will do. Yeah, and they forgot that he's a warlock assassin, fighter, champion, tank, mage. They, they got, they got to think about this. Yeah. Uh oh. Oh. Speaking of which, as you said, saving the sun for the last minute. Didn't even need to use it actually there. No, he didn't even bother using it. I mean, that was a, quite a bit of damage. That Thresh was very tanky without being able to proc his aftershock. Or very and, squishy, rather, well, not tanky, but. Proxying the wave now. Well, things are not looking too great. It's the side of Ithaca. They aren't at the moment. I mean, they're only down a little bit over a thousand gold, and they were able to get that Rift Herald, which they should be able to use to knock down a few plates. But a little bit of a mishap that got both of their bot laners killed. And even but as we did talk about, continue. Um, <laughs> as we did talk about previously, the main uh, thing we're going to be looking for is team fights this game. As Ithaca, you know, they want those all important level sixes, which have all come on play and. Albany is waiting and waiting for a long time for this kill. 
Yeah, they are. They're willing to drop CS for it, but it looks like they will get it as the Brown is level 6. Cloud is flashing away from the concussive blows this week. Thumbmore is back, and Sandbag is also in the mid lane. Aesol is blown the flash, so it does look like it will be the end of the Dragon, and it is, as well as Cloud's getting saved from his supports and people so overall, it's a one for zero trade. I think I was able to get that kill in the mid lane, and now they're even able to put down the Rift Herald, which will give them a lot more gold in the respective oh, yeah. of things. Although, they just left the Rift Herald for the Dragon. Okay, so they're not getting the gold onto the Victor, which I'm going to call as a mistake, but instead putting all their forces towards this Dragon to try to even up this Drake before the map block. But, oh no, it's looking like a little bit of a mistake by ulting in onto the Dragon, able to take him down. Lozaga is trying to take out the Brahm, who is so low, and he does end up getting him now. 2v2, two two, Icy Cloud. It's important to notice the amount of chakram, chakrams he has, which is a ton, but unfortunately, he has less HP, and even, even the Aphelios turret is what kills the Jinx, which is kind of funny, but it's a 4 for 2 trade, 4 for 3 trade, I guess, if you want to count the running soul, and Albany is able to pick up the Dragon. I'm not sure if I'd call that Witch. I think it was a little bit overzealous. What an interesting fight. That was just very split. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And you know, there's a lot. We talked about the power of the team fighting from Ithaca, and it just was not there. The ultra are you down really so and big no there on both on the back of the other thing. He does and he exits it. Ooh. But it's oh unfortunate execute to the tower. The it, yes. I mean that's what you want, you don't want Nar getting gold. I mean, true, it's not bad at all. And now Sandbag and Menwars are here to try to try to clean this last kill up. And he's trying his best to run away, but I'm not sure he'll be able to do so. Is yeah, the kill will go over to Sandbag. But he drops down with the bellow's breath. Yes, Nar. <laughs> Eli Ron did almost outplay that guy. Like I give him the credit. There was it was a very very close outplay right there. He was on if the he edge. Touched Aurelian's goal. Yeah, or, I mean, he was even able to dodge the Aurelian Soul Q, the stun. He didn't dodge the ultimate, the horn, but being able to dodge one of those gave him that little extra second where if he'd thrown off one more auto, he wouldn't have been able to be killed, but... Exactly. Hmm. So looking at item breakpoints, Mythics seem to be coming online here. Jinx a bit earlier than Aphelios. Um, we Two Divine Sunders coming in, a Gore Drinker, and one of our new items. Uh, was it Crown of the Shattered Queen? Yeah. That yep. here is holding on to. A wonderful item for making him uh, be able to take all sorts of burst damage that 75% damage reduction to. It's, oh, like sure. it's like a built in Galio to be in minus the taunt. Just the, the damage reduction is kind of nuts to sold off, and it's pretty good, but oh, Brilliant Soul. Getting ganked again, Jarvan knows, Sandbag knows that Soul is not at his flash, able to take him down. Another kill donated to this Victor, and this Victor's, this Victor's getting pretty strong. 2-1-2 two, and two at this point, 113 CS at 14 minutes. He's, he's starting to look pretty strong. Getting in, I mean, he already has his crown and his sword feet, so he's getting up there. And Oh no, rotating from mid to top, and he pushed the kill a little bit too far forward now. He's getting caught out. Five of the lights of the two minutes kill will be donated to Clouds, and it is a little well, bit you, more you would think that Andy would know that Jark was heading top. He had vision on him in mid lane, and then knew that the bot lane was, was missing, so a little bold of him standing up for that tower. And, you know, tower plays have fallen, so he's a... You know, Horn wants his tower. <laughs> Yeah, just staying for one wave too much, and because of that, I think we'll be able to get the Rift Herald all right. So, it is post-15 minutes, so getting the Rift Herald isn't super important, but oh my goodness, I can see Cloud's running for his life now. It doesn't look like he'll be able to run at all. TP is coming in from the Orn, and I think that's all we'll get from that fight, but once again, mispositioning is the key to pay attention to. It is the key of where gold swapping, where gold is going at this point. If you're pushing too far, you're gonna die. We're seeing both of these teams take advantage of that as good as you can. So. But maybe some signs of, you know, it's a new season. Not everything is perfect, you know. It's January. I just, I mean, not every, yeah, look at look, look at the spectator client. Look, if you look at the top left corner as we're about to see a fight, you can't even see that there's the Drake, the Drake spawn is down, but we are seeing Lazaga collapse on with the Braum and the Bai. The Bai and him did use his flash, and Jinx will be the one to pick up the kill. But, oh man. 
If any of you were paying attention to the stream last night, by the way, my game was having all sorts of bugs in those two games. Although I don't want to talk about them very much because your boy played like uh, not good, <laughs> but it was very questionable games for me. But ooh, the good cataclysm to get to the lantern. Very well played, Sandbag, living on a single point of health. Yes, very, very lucky people survived that. So. Wow. Our bot side from you all we will claim yet another turret. This Jinx, Jinx is I think he's about to get a second item on this bag. Yeah. It should which be Which will be massive. I mean it looks like at this point I don't know, it builds out of the zeal. I don't know, there's too many Probably, options. Yeah. Rapid fire can maybe? Yeah, i I mean I'm thinking rapid fire is the smartest choice for him he wants to take as far away as he can from everyone else. But Yeah, I heard though that she can like kind of just build whatever she wants. Very, yeah, very, very flexible, and she <laughs> yeah, just had, like, random dancer, you know? Okay, no, that's not, that's not bad either. That's not, I was expecting, I was expecting either, like, a rune on the rapid fire, but, uh... I mean, you know, attack speed does the job. Oh, attack speed is attack speed. And is Azerath getting caught out? No, luck gets out of the gravity well. He did get out, but this is important Drake to notice. He was the break that puts all the on soul point and it seems as if Hippocus is going to get it at this moment, which they do. Yeah, it's hard. We won't get a replay and you won't be able to notice, but I see Cloud did have to blow his flash in the top lane to an Aurelian soul gank. Uh, he must have gotten stunned up or something like that, although he is full HP, so he can't have lost too much help. But. <laughs> that's that's the, the fear of being an ADC. <laughs> Yeah, ADC. Such a role where you have to be afraid of every tiny little thing. You see a scuttle crab and you have to freak out. But <laughs> I mean, you know, like where there be scuttle crabs, the jungler is soon to follow. So I suppose Very that's true. always something to keep in mind. <laughs> As you said, you all me is on soul point here. So we've talked, we've talked about team fights, you know, as like you know, a big a big theme this game. We haven't seen one 5v5 team fight. We have. There's a whole bunch of skirmishes that are on dodging from the Which, five there. Who Albany seems to relish in these skirmishes. Yes. Oh yes, with the vibe, with the Aurelian Soul, the pick potential is kind of nuts. So, I mean, we've seen one person steps too far forward, they just get killed instantly. So. But at least teleports are online. That's a big thing yeah. to keep on foot. Exactly. We're and speaking of which, another skirmish. Another skirmish. This isn't a skirmish. It's a team fight. Nar TPing in. The first two kills will fall for Ithaca, but now Ophelios, the first to die, then goes to rush for Ithaca. It is now three v three in the fight. Sandbag is running away with one HP, and so is the rest of the team. But Jinx now sped up, maybe looking for the Nar in the future. It's just Jinx and Victor versus the world, or by the world I mean Asol and. But oh, he, oh. I get it. He has the all. Ooh, oh. Wonderful cleanse coming through. One, yes. Able to get those last two autos in the kill. And this Jinx is online. Holy moly, this Jinx is very slow. Huh. Yeah, we said rapid fire cannon, but no, Fan Dancer was better. <laughs> it worked. Jinx I mean, good luck. Too long. Fan Dancer did the job. I, mean, I won't complain with it at all. I and mean, backing to buy a BF sword, even though she just backed the rest of them to go, is kind of, kind of nuts. Very impactful. Oh Jeez. yeah, and as you did say, uh, that was the closest thing it took us had to a team fight, and uh, they it was not on their terms at all. They nope. had some people pushing up too far in the mid to get a turret, which resolved in Albany coming in for a very nice collapse, and Elaron's TP was a bit late, and he didn't have Mega until much later. So yeah, but the fight started so sporadically. Is he didn't really have a good ward to get to at the moment, but the TPs are important cooldowns to keep note on. And now Orn is a TP, so we'll see him posted up in the side lane. Probably has to be matched by the Victor now because the Nar is not going to be able to do it. Ooh. Yeah. As a. Uh, oh, I really like this. The uh, Orn has a tier stacking, and not stacking, it's the Fimble Winter stacking now. The, uh, or a Winter's Approach that's trying to turn into a Fimble Winter. But uh, I'm a big fan of that build. To keep an Orn on the map at all times. I think Fimble is just good in general. Fimble Winter, I think it's a very, very good. I mean, because you can build it on like almost anyone, like Kane, yeah. 
We're seeing it built on Rise, like mages even are building it. It's just like a solid item. It gives a lot of good stats, as well as all that extra mana. But oh, he is charging the Q this time. Looking the mid, isn't going to be able to get anything out of it. But I suppose all they do pick up that tower is pretty good. Yeah, it's a cool idea from the side of the Empire, but you know, the, the Victor laser coming down to stop the Ace Wolf from flying in with a big star. <laughs> I mean, gold's relatively even, all things considered. Uh, the soul point is up for all many sets. Very, very, that's I'm assuming where we'll see the next fight coming up in 50 seconds. But, I mean, you know, a 3k gold lead, relatively even. <laughs> well, you know, 3k isn't that much. It could be like 8 or 9, you know? It's about an item, and I'm assuming that whole item is on the Jinx at this point. So... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but we are seeing both teams start to post themselves towards this dragon, the Kemp Tech Drake. And I mean, if you're if you're Albany here, I don't even know need to know if you need to look for the dragon. You could threaten the Baron. I mean, the Jinx is so strong, you'll be able to take it down so quickly. She has all three component parts for the Infinity Edge now, and they do have mid prio. So it's like Edica could lose a lot for getting this Drake. And I mean, the only thing that the Drake does for them is buy them five more minutes towards the inevitable soul. So. Yeah, Edica pockets towards the Drake. Wow. Only just says, I'll take this turret. You guys can have a dragon, we'll take a turret. I mean, I call that a good trade. Braum is a little bit forward at the moment. He does get his dash canceled out. Nars coming in. Mega is able to land a stun on two. Victor now in or in hard lands on four members of Edica, which is Massive divide. Now, in the middle of the fight on top of the Acelio, Jinx got her first kill, so she's gonna start to pop off. There's the second, this is looking like a Penta. There's two, nope, five takes the second one, so no Penta for Jinx, but it does look like it'll be an eventual ace for Albany. Nope, they decide to let Eli Roth live, and I don't know if that dragon is necessarily worth it. I mean, they're gonna lose a tower, maybe two, also an inhibitor, as well as four members of their teams. So that's very, 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 very um, well played for Albany. Very uh, well, but, yeah. forced, forced a very nice uh, decision to be made where either they had to sacrifice the drag or sacrifice the mid turret, and they uh, lost an inhibitor. <laughs> <laughs> they lost both and something. I mean, now, no, okay, Albany's just gonna look for the resets. They're not gonna, they're not gonna make an attempt at, at the Baron just yet, although I'm assuming that's the next mission because. Nothing else on the map to get. Objective bounties are down. Always gotta look at those. An extra gold for the whole team, assuming. They come out, or assuming they are able to be collected by Ithaca. And now, Albany is getting vision around the Baron Pit to set that up. The, the, we're gonna have another problem because in three minutes, Ithaca will be faced with the same exact scenario of, mm. you know, Lose another turret, or lose the, the Hextech Soul. Yeah, I mean, Albany has a long time before they really have to contest those drakes, right? They can just, like, leave... If they think they can get more out of it, they can just leave those drakes for a while, not do apps, not do anything about it. So... Yeah, they could just end the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, even they can just take it straight down mid that... Especially if they have the Jinx, the Jinx is going to deal so much damage to all the towers. And now Orn is no longer afraid of this Gnar. Not anymore. I mean, especially when he's Mega, he's going to be able to fight him. And those Grass procs are healing so much. But we are seeing the start of a fight into the top side. Orn and Eli Ron both have TP. So we could see something there. But instead, we'll just see the flash out from Jarvan. All right. Nothing brewing as of yet. Although it looks like Albany is going to be facing themselves towards this inner top lane tower. And they do pick it up. As Orn is not gonna let this tower go down. <laughs> no, the top out inner outer rather. The top outer bot. Oh my goodness. I can't. Talk. It's okay. So, we're we're back to casting new too. It's, like it's not just the players. It's us too. <laughs> we're doing great. All right. The bot outer. There we go. Is here to stay, and Orn's not letting it go. First try. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But as Orange stays down in his bot line, bot, ooh, whoa. 
We bought. We're doing great. Okay, we're we doing, need to. Let's take. Great. Let's just stop talking. Let's get five seconds. Five seconds. Just be quiet. <laughs> Recollect ourselves. We'll be fine. We got this. Just. All right. Okay. That wasn't five seconds. It was close enough. Uh, we're back <laughs> in it. <laughs> um. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so the rest of the team, uh, we're gonna we're gonna ignore the bot. Line. We can't say that. We're no, it's just, just the rest of the, the team bottom. is going to yeah. be focusing towards the Baron pit, and now they're going to be forcing if they're going to come and fight them because if they don't, they uh, lose Baron and lose the game. Our head is back. There's a good TP. There comes both. TP as well. The Baron's, the Baron's at around 5,000 HP, so it's going to end up He's going to have to make a move. If they're going to make a move and make it soon, Jarvan isn't anywhere near the pit. The Baron goes down, but the hook does land on the own. So he's just stop on stars. The pit, I guess, so that's important to look at. Jinx is now having to flash out. Jinx is out of play for now. Or no, her first call is Braum. It looks to be the second one to be by. And if we go right now, taking the two for zero trade on kills, which is big at this point. Two shutdowns, or, oh, zero shutdowns. Zero to zero shutdowns, that kind of bothers me. But um, regardless, some gold out of the team. Gets rid of a few of those Baron buffs, and I mean, honestly, a pretty good fight. Yeah. This is what they were looking for. This is what they wanted the entire game. It is. I mean, they want to get these team fights, and I mean, Eli Ron, Eli Ron's the MVP of that fight. It may not look like he did that much, but he forced that Jinx's flash out of the fight, and that Jinx is prime, the primary source of damage for Albany right now. So getting her out of that fight was huge. Yeah, the two main damage dealers of Aso and Jinx were. Like, taking out the fact that there's a long tier, it's so with fucking stopwatch. It was, I'm sorry, I'm gonna interrupt you if they're getting another oh. fight. Okay, objective Ooh. bounty, Jarvis gets the dragon, that's big, although Dress is down to five. Is it is gonna have to run or else the game is over, I'm not sure they will be able to. If the first three members have fallen, or two members have fallen, there goes Renar. Now is it a 2v5 with just the base left? Death timers are at around 30 seconds, which I mean, all things considered, oh, 40 seconds, my apologies, but very very long and I mean this might just be the end of the game I'm not sure that the Jarvan and the Victor will be able to stop the oncoming force of Albany I mean, it took a lot more than one team fight for it to come back and they didn't have it we'll see they if they can hold the car they're trying their hardest they're going to the bomb Albany Rush is now back into the fight okay maybe Ithaca will be able to hold this off they will I mean they're probably to alive as well they don't even lose one Nexus Tower. I'd say that's pretty big. I mean, they got oh. the dragon. They bought themselves another five minutes. So I... That's the wave clear of the victory right there. That, that it is. It is. I'm gonna... That's a win. That's a win if I'm Ithaca. You got the dragon. You may have lost a few members, but at this point, it doesn't matter because you didn't lose any towers. You didn't lose anything. Ithaca lost nothing other than them lives for that dragon, and I'd just call that 100%. Yeah. They were able to take... And stop the soul, which is huge. Oh, Orn getting to the side. Orn is a little bit picked off at the moment, but now Jarvan is running for his life. He did have to, Orn did have to flash. That's one thing to note. But here comes the big sun underneath the tower. Orn Horn isn't landing on anyone. And I think it has all their cooldowns. Kind of close them out onto the buy. She's now left alone in this force to flash to get out and now it looks like Albany's running for the hills. Meganar out of two people, two members of the team. A so force he's using a huge knock up from the driver in the back line. The first person calls Brom, followed by Ethelios. Jinx is fed up now. This is a, this is not looking good for anything because Victor will now be the third person to call. Now it is two people, the Jarvan and the Thresh, neither of them have any weight clear nor HP, and that will be almost necessarily game one for Albany. Yeah, I see the GG's coming out. It's uh that was big. No, no, that was big. I mean, you could try, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, oh, does he do it? It was. Yeah. <laughs> it was close, right? He's close, but that is <laughs> very, very valiant effort indeed. And that is game one to Albany. I mean, like looking at long things to begin with, that was a pretty, that was a pretty impressive showing from Albany there. That was solid early game, solid mid game, solid late game, and they just completely like voided what Ithaca wanted to do. Ithaca wanted a team fight, right? They wanted to look yeah. for those big fights and they didn't just never got them. I mean, when they got the fights, they won. Well, no, that's yeah. not true. That's well, not true. They, when they, they fared far them. better when they did the team fights than when we, they didn't, but they just couldn't get the fights early enough to where they were already so far behind in gold, they were just losing the fights. So I, I think they needed to come a little bit sooner to try to get those fights in a little bit quicker. Exactly. It was just... 
at one point when the fights were happening, it was far too late, as you said. And then that last fight, it was just the way that the victor was unable to follow up with the NAR. The two, the stun was huge. The jars was able to follow up, but the damage wasn't able to be there either. Aphelios immediately died. It was very unfortunate. Was indeed. We're going to take a quick break before we get back into chain select. I don't think it'll be very wrong as long as players are almost ready, but we'll be back in just a moment. Stay tuned.
Welcome back, y'all. We are waiting, awaiting anxiously for the second champ. Uh, holy moly, for the second champ select to start, but it has not started as of yet. So let's take a little bit of a recap, Mark. Let's start. Let's let it go over last game. What do you want to see Ithaca do differently this game, or what do you want to see Albany do the same going into this night? Oh, so those those two very important questions. Um, <laughs> I want to see. Is it good play either like they can keep the same draft style, but they need to play safer then because they're being very aggressive with the Jarvan, which is good. But for the draft style that they went for, I don't particularly like it because they wanted so much team fight. But the aggressive Jarvan, they gave them the confidence to push up in lanes and then they got picked off. They couldn't match the pick potential of you all winning. Now, on the other side, they could switch it up and go for, you know, a completely different style of team where they match the pick potential because I think that the individual play of Ithaca easily can match Albany. Just the team itself didn't work there. But then looking from Albany's perspective, they were so good at just avoiding all of the team fights Ithaca wanted. And when they had a team fight, they split it up perfectly. They made sure Jinx was safe. I I, I can't say much for them to, to fix on, you know? played the game very very effectively i mean the only time when they were getting picked off is when they were doing the same thing as it was doing where they just take it two three steps too far forward and then getting killed because of it and so we are looking the champs like looks like it will be ithaca once again on blue side and 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 and, and albany on red side so what kind of draft adaptations do you think will be made? Do you think anything will different? Do you think we'll see like an elusive, like maybe a Jarvan ban or something like that? What do you think is going? On? Well, thinking about it, I think that uh, if uh, for Ithaca, it, well, Ithaca has very easy bans. I think for shutting down the roaming and pick potential that uh, the side of Albany had, they just take away that a soul. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and but for Albany, you know, they kind of do the same versus the mid lane, take away the victor because. The Victor Jarvan was like the most effective combo they had. Being able to put someone inside that Jarvan Cataclysm and then immediately drop in the Chaos Storm for Victor on top of them, that was, you know, easy kills for them. Well, what band um, do you think will get dropped for like that A-Soul? Do you think, you do think, I mean, maybe we'll see a Corky? Ooh, or do you probably, think Corky still gets banned? I think, I think Janna. I think the Janna. Mm -hmm. Because the Janna was an early band, which, you know, um, it seemed like based on this uh the support in my opinion maybe i'm just being biased against supports <laughs> but like you know i'd rather ban an asil than a janna just because you know one takes over the game one helps somebody else take over the game that's just me i'm also a bronze player they still well, ban janna never mind okay they did just ban janna yeah <laughs> champs like did start you guys can't see it yet but it'll be up in a moment janna was the first ban out for mythica so everything that mark just said was just wrong uh, but, <laughs> but, but, okay. All right. I mean, I am kind of excited to see what happens. I mean, the hacker, I'm assuming, I'm, yeah, I don't think Albany will need to change their bands all that much. I mean, maybe they ban away the victor, maybe something like that. There goes the A soul. Okay. So A soul is getting banned away. completely wrong. You Just are completely wrong. They now. dropped it for it. Yeah. yeah. A lot of, a lot of mid lane bands coming through. Oh, Ithaca. All right. Ithaca bans away the Vi. I, I mean, do like that. I do like that as well. The Vi was able to just shut down the Aphelios. Aphelios was not able to do anything with the Vi around. Okay, Albany kept the same band, so there's nothing different there. And they Ooh. first pick the Jinx. The Corky is it's up. The Jinx. Corky's up. I think Corky's crazy powerful pick. I st oh, I'll yeah. stand by it until proven otherwise. The build. Yeah. The, the, what why, is it? Why, why is Moro Mana and uh, Ludens? Ugh. Wait, what, why can't he build like that in Ugh. D5? <laughs> Zeri. Oh, we forgot about Zeri. Zeri's still up. So we see some uh, sick parkour from this champ hopping over the yeah. lanes like Talon. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, Zeri is a, like a uh, combination of Kane and Akshan and Volibear and it's a lot of champs. <laughs> just like she's just like a hodgepodge of different champs. All right, I already love all these comps. Zeri Corky. Zeri, new champ. As we know, if the champ is released newest, it's guaranteed to be overpowered. So there's Zeri. I mean, she hasn't even gotten a patch since she hasn't been out a full patch yet. So she's very strong. Corky, 
We talked about it in the pregame. Very, very strong champion. A, a whole game around. It gets stronger as the game goes on because of his ability to one-shot champions. And Ithaca, mm-hmm. picking up the Jace and the Jinx. Two other, I'd say, S-tier picks that are going through. The, the Jace could go into either of the solo lanes. I mean, I, at this point, I don't think it'll go into the Corky because I'm not sure that lane's necessarily great for Jace. Yeah, that seems like a top lane. But uh, it, they hovered a Victor. I think the Victor could still come out. It could. Or even like an Oriana, I think, is good into Corky. If Lazaga feels good enough to pilot that champion. And Lilia. Okay, Chungle. Lilia. Oh. Lilia, a classic sandbag pick. Oh, yeah. I mean, we know the Ithaca junglers love their horses, whether it's the female horse or the male horse. They both love to play them. So, oh, and we also forgot Rakan. about Rakan. Okay. Oh, yeah. This is another reason why I said the Janna wasn't worth the ban. He's got a bunch of other picks, the Braum, the Rakan, his Rel. So, and eh, just me. But, you know. Uh, it's. I don't think if they didn't ban Jenna, they would have picked it. I think Rakan or Braum would have come out anyway. That's yeah. just me. But there's the Thresh taken away. I don't think the Ithaca would have picked Thresh. There's no Ophelia here. But, I know. mean, I think Thresh is still. A, I think Thresh is still a relatively good champion, especially because Jinx, like Jinx is a mobile, right? She's an mobile champion. This is true. This is true. This Getting is true. her out of the water is a good thing because I mean, I, I mean, I there think it's is. okay. Yeah, I think I need some sort of engage with this next actress. They don't have any hard engage right now, whether that be whether they grab like the Jarvan or or they probably won't go Jarvan, but I don't know. They need some sort of engage to round out their comp, whether that comes from a support or something like that. But Yeah. I mean Ooh. Lee Sin. If that's a Lee Sin, I'm gonna be very excited. I hope it does get locked in. Lee Sin's pretty exciting. Some, some sick Lee Sin mechanics. <laughs> we can, oh, great. <laughs> we will see the blind monk. Oh, yeah. Showing his mechanical skill in the jungle. I would assume it's jungle. I mean, then again, everything can be flexed nowadays. So who knows? All right. You asked for engage. Are we going to see Oriali? The classic, the classic man walrus, Alistair. A pick that we've known him to play. All right. Well. He had to do me like that, but (laughs) yeah, it's still a form of hard engage peel for the jinx. I, I don't mind the pick at all. I think it's probably better than Ali thinking about it, but Ali's more exciting because of the storyline, but is that, does that mean that means means Jace mid Jace mid or, or hear me out. We know Sandbag has an immense champion pool of like all the champions in the game. What if it's a Jack Strungle and the Lily goes into a solo lane? I mean, ah, uh, ah, uh, it could happen. Thinking about it, I would not want Jax into Corky <laughs> or Jax blind. Well, what about Jax and the Shen? Not that bad. That yeah. probably actually is very workable. I mean, all right, Jack Jungle. I don't. Wait, hold on. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> we're confusing <laughs> ourselves okay it's it's a it, lily because... jungle doesn't matter it's a lily jungle okay this this makes this i mean yeah this makes more sense to me yes for con mid <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay come on keep, keep the move there we go okay good <laughs> <laughs> it was a recon mid i dude i had a recon mid in my solo queue game the other day oh my goodness i can tell you we lost that game <laughs> i had i had a full ad shen top we did not lose that game but it was a full crit he didn't get yasuo so he just went full crit on shen but that's regard regardless that's not valuable i don't think we'll be seeing a kraken slayer bork shen today um i mean god i hope not but uh, what do you think of these team comps going in I I feel like I feel like Albany can play a very similar style they did before. Mm-hmm. They can easily outmaneuver Ithaca, but Ithaca, I don't. What is their team? Like, yeah, I try, it's a, it seems their team's a lot more like they are. They are around team. They're around scaling. Like they want to scale that late game. They want yeah. to get the Jinx at three items, the Jacks at three items, the Jace at three items to get them going. Their team comp seems a little bit more. It seems a little bit more difficult to execute. Rather Most than certainly. the other one, because with the Rakan Lee Sin, like, you just have Rakan go in, Lee Sin kick someone back and Shen ult, right? Whereas exactly, very simple. <laughs> whereas Ithaca is a little bit harder to do. They look, they could. I mean, I suppose they're going to try to run some one three one 
I would assume that's what this kind of comp is going for because you have the Jax that wants to split push and the J set is very, very strong in the solo lane once he gets amount of like strong amount a couple of items. So I'm assuming that that's what Ithaca is trying to do with our team. And I mean, they can get matched in those solo lanes for sure. Like the Corky damage will scale and so will the Shen will be able to hold off a Jax at almost any point in the game, not necessarily kill him, or, but he'll be able to survive. Which is the valuable part. I mean, you know, Jack's on three items. I don't who cool. you said Shenzhou could survive. I don't know about that. If he goes Thunder, uh, Blade of the Ruin King, I, Shen's gonna be quaking in his boots. <laughs> quaking in his boots. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll wait for that thirty minute mark when Shen is quaking in his boots. But in the moment, <laughs> we're gonna take a quick break for competitive integrity, and we'll be right back. Getting into this electric season opener, Ithaca on the blue side, Albany on the red side. And I mean, this is our first look, Zary in competitive play. I mean, she hasn't gotten played in any of the pro leagues. So, I mean, I'm calling this as the first Welcome pro, uh, I, although it's amateur, I suppose, the first amateur uh, Zary player. So, uh, congrats, yes. D-Bubs. -D D -D yes. 30 seconds until minions spawn. I can't do it. But uh, we, yeah, it's, 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 and bees, it's a name. Uh oh. And we have a lovely invade. We do. There Sandbag has to blow his flash ready, and that for all you solo queue viewers is why you don't sit in that bush. It's not worth it. Don't do it. It's not worth it. Never is it worth it. You don't mm -hmm. get to see the champions until they're on top of you. It's just always stand in the open next to Rafter Pit. I know the bush is enticing, but it's never the idea to do. But it was just a flash, I guess, so not that bad. Oh it's a portal combat. Really doesn't go to that much. You know. you know. Ooh, wait, Rakan to Glacial. Is that what you normally take on Rakan? I'm just noticing this right now. I was expecting Guardian. Man, I mean, that Glacial is kind of interesting. We are switching off. We'll be on cameras for a second. We're having a little bit of an in game switchy stuff, but. Yeah, just doing a little bit of tough behind the team and uh we should be back now yeah but so we as you talked about with uh, the con and glacial argument i think guardian is better for the lane just just my opinion but um 
I mean, yeah. I'm down to see Glacial. I love Glacial. I think that's a really fun odd man. A really fun rune. But it is a wonderful rune. <laughs> I take it on Orn in the top lane, and it makes no sense. <laughs> I accidentally took it on Diana two days ago. So, oh no, that was yesterday. Actually, I took it on Diana yesterday. <laughs> Oh, and it did absolutely nothing. Yet, it was kind of nice because it like guaranteed I hit my ult. But other than that, I was like, <laughs> why did I take this? <laughs> but... So now we see uh, Jax doing exactly with her Counter-Strike, being able to shut down auto-attack based champions. And I an IE Shen. But, you know, Shen is still Shen and his autos hurt when their Counter-Strike is down. Not quite in his boots just yet. But <laughs> <laughs> I won't live that one down, will I? <laughs> oh no, that's, it is good. I'm not like claiming it. It's a good thing. I enjoy the quick, quick in the quaking in the boots. That's a that's a good thing. And we're having a few more difficulties still pop up at the moment. So we'll just do a little bit of radio content to tell you what's going on, even though you can't see what's going on. So bot lane's pushing in. Top lane, the bot lane of. Albany is pushing in the mid lanes around, even in the top lane of Eli Ron. Just backed, got a little bit of a cheater, bought a ruby pistol, refilled his corrupting pots, which is, I mean, are honestly pretty valuable. Junglers are just doing their normal clears. Lee Sin is on the bot schedule. Oh, and you guys can see what's happening. I don't need to explain it all anymore. No more radio. But, I don't know. I mean, the beginning of the game so far is looking relatively normal, I suppose, per se. Although, look at this. Zeri working with her jungler. They did this last game too. The Zeri didn't go, but uh, Azdorath yeah. did. So it's, it's something that we now notice that they like to do. They like to put, push in those first two waves around when Lee Sin can get that Scuttle Crab and they can roam up. I mean, they didn't get much vision, but they were able to push up, which is kind of big. And Lilia looks like she might be trying for some sort of gank, maybe. She is hanging around. If they decide to overextend, which it doesn't look they will, like they will rather at that moment. I'm a big fan of this new U Albany style where they play around Reaper. This is the new player on the team, I believe. And he has been a menace. Could have had him here. Yeah, no, he's definitely been doing his job. That's for sure. I mean, his vibe performance was quite spectacular. And I mean, we're only four minutes in, so we can't say much about the Lee Sin, but we're seeing a little bit of an engage in the bot lane and in the top lane. Zeri has to blow her flash early and it, and her heal, but it doesn't look like she has to do much else. Eli Ron's got to be a little bit careful as he's getting Lee Sin, and he does notice that last second. Wow, that was that was a kind of nutso reaction time. But <laughs> Yeah, that was quick. That was so fast. I mean, I suppose there's a reason he's Masters, right? But... <laughs> There was Masters. I don't think he's Masters right now. I think he's like mid diamond. But not Masters yet. Back to the game. We do have our first Drake game. Again, is Infernal. So mm -hmm. there should be some high priority on this. And um, the way that Albany has been focusing around Reaper, you'd think that they'll be the first one to uh, make their way towards that Drake. You would think though, I mean, especially because the Lee is going to be the better early game champion. It kind of surprised me at this point that Lee Sin is up on camps on the Lilia. I mean, I, he did get that wave top lane, so I'm assuming that's where he got it from. And Lilia, I mean, has all of her camps up to take, but... Yeah. And she did spend quite a while sitting in that bush for bot side. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just noticed. Oh, he's using the full metal J skin. You not oh. like it? <laughs> not a fan, personally. That's just Why not? Me, but you Why know. not? You know, just 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 my opinion. I prefer what's the the uh, the, like the forgotten Jace, but with the black and red. Mm -hmm. It's uh, call me an edge lord, but uh, this, this is the robot one. Is, uh, no, that's eh. fair. I mean, what about the arcane Jace? Skin? Didn't they or, or the arcane Jace? That can sit. But we are. <laughs> nah, I like um, the academy. And we talk about skids, you know. Oh, academy is amazing. Oh. I got it out of a box. Not trying to flex, but um, <laughs> <laughs> um, not trying to flex. <laughs> okay, woo! We're focusing. We're on task. Um, <laughs> I mean, there is not much going on at the moment. As oh, Chambers comes down, you know, Zeri does her the cues as she normally does. Oh, lands on Zeri. Zambag is around to try to get back into it. Zeri has no flash or the heal to try to get out, and the kill will be donated to the Jinx. 
for first blood. Rakan has to flash away, but you can look for a re-engage if now Lee Sin is going to fight. Sandbag will fall due to the ignite, but now is a 2v2. Manwar, so this flash over the wall, lands the hook. Onto, onto the Rakan. Chase is now here to try to join the fight. He doesn't have a shock blast and speed gate thingy for a bit. So it's a one-for-one -one trade for now, but Albany does have to blow a whole lot of thunder spells there. This is a bit of a different start for this guy here. As a uh, lady. Um, I see Cloud is not behind this time. He is uh, doing, you know, fairly on par with that of D Dub, and he, uh, you know, won't be a full item down. Hopefully, coming into the CS. And uh, guess where our uh, our new viewers who may not know exactly what Zeri does? Um, her kit is uh, unique for an ADC, as um, you know, her auto attacks are. Magic damage when they count as abilities. When her Q is her actually her auto, which is a uh, skill shot. She's okay, very interesting. And, uh, you know, they tried to make her a very new champion, and uh, we have a little bit of an engage, but My nothing comes up to it. Does she yeah, scale off have, of AP? Oh. She, her W also scales off of AP, right? Yes, it does. Have you seen an AP Zarya yet? I, I've seen lots of hybrid there. Hybrid there. It's the uh, Triforce Nasher that I've seen, but also I don't think I've a build, which is because, you know, it's a bronze. <laughs> I not, you know, I shouldn't say bronze. I'm in silver four, actually. Oh, impressive. <laughs> right. I mean, I could, I could see it being okay, some sort of hybrid, maybe. I don't know. I haven't really seen I haven't played to the max that much, but there are three members of Ithaca right now looking at towards this gen, who I believe does not have his Circle of Doom at the moment. I don't remember what it's called, so that's what we're calling it from now on. Circle of Doom. Oh. The Spirit Refuge. I don't I know how you remember game. that, but I mean, suppose top lane <laughs> things. Uh, it is going to be a 3v3, though. That's important to notice at the moment. Sandbag is able to use the sleep to get off instantly, and oh boy, I don't think this dive's going to end very well. Manwar is still be the first one to fall. There goes Sandbag, and Bazaga is here, but I'm not sure there's too much you can do about it. Oh my goodness, yeah, he does quite oh, a bit of damage damn. not having an item. Shen, though, using his ult, there is the gate. Jason will fall. Now it's a 2v2, is but Corky is full HP. Wow, that Jace, I mean, they say two Jace, items Jace is strong. I mean, half item Jace, Jace is strong. Yeah, no, he did He did quite a bit. Hm. He just got a bunch of swords and a tier. <laughs> it's just unfortunate because now Sandbag's missing out, or Cloud's missing out on all this CS, so yes, and... I mean, very good use of the chompers, and he does fortunately fall due to the Zeri auto, but Azeroth is trying to survive, and he does survive. Wow, okay. What? He survived for way too long. But Jace got a solo kill. Okay, so Ithaca did end up going three for two in that trade, I guess, but. That was. I say overzealous from the sides of all the. It, it was a little bit, but I mean, they did, they did pretty well with that. You think, like, Nautilus got one of those kills i mean yeah i mean and they I got two kills out of it like that's not i guess bad they weren't big. expecting sandbag to would get back as fast because you know he did just die yeah yeah it's, so uh you know unfortunately that, those little uh deer food, you know they uh can make their way across the map pretty quickly <laughs> i mean yeah that is what that champion's kind of known for that was that was interesting <laughs> wow that and was Azura. very well played by azurak uh, the sitting in the bush, waiting for his cooldowns to come back up. He wasn't able to do very much, and oh no, man, Walrus. Oh, this oh. is not where you want to be. I'm He's out of it at the moment. Well. Jinx doesn't have heal to get back to it. One more auto will do it, and they will. Man, Walrus falls to Reaper. Uh, it's a little bit unfortunate, trying to get a little bit of vision, and just steps in right into the waiting hands of the Lee Sin and the Rakan. <laughs> As Quirky does have the package, and this is a wonderful time to take advantage of the bot side. As Reaper is like, once again down here to make some plays. Oh, and there comes the package for driving. Ah, that was an unfortunate. I mean, I suppose he's able to get out of it okay, but now Albany is on the run. Nithiga's all come. Here comes the Jax TP. It's not about to be a 5v3. Oh, the Counter Strike misses barely, but it doesn't matter. Eli Ron has. Shut down the Corky as now he is running forward as the Jax. He will get taken out by the Rakan as Zeri is just so fast and doing so much damage. What is this champion? That's not fair. 
but it doesn't matter if she dies, Sandbag survives. All right. For the first fight in the game, Sandbag does not die. That is a valuable thing. Congrats to Sandbag for not dying in this fight. But... You know, you know, his name implies he was in the just Sandbag. I mean, that's a valid trade. They're, they're going to get most, if not all, of this power here. Or Ithaca is going to get most, if not all, of this power. And I mean, Chen wasn't able to join the fight, or he didn't join the fight, rather. And they got two kills out of it. I'd call it worse. This Jace is going to be very, very, very strong for me in this game. Oh yeah. We uh as we're talking about in draft, uh, this Lozaga plays so many champions. And yeah. this Jace, he hasn't played since last year. And uh it's coming out here and terrorizing RA three and oh. Down only about twelve CS. So this is uh cool. I'm excited to see how well this scales with uh, this Muramana Eclipse build. I mean, I think it'll be, I think it'll go pretty well. I see nothing wrong with it, but we do have oh, to also oh. watch watch that Corky scaling as he has finished his first item and is now starting to work on his second one. But Dragon. Once again, watch the Dragon. Rapan with a quickness of the charm going in. Oh my goodness, he gets one shot of it. Jay Shen uses his ult, but he does not work because Rakan dies so quickly. The dragon is spawned, so it is. it will be a 4v3 in the side of Ithaca at the Drake. Jace is still alive, and we know how strong he is. He is look, currently looking for the Corky one-on-one, -on -one and just takes a little bit of a chunk out of him, not too much. And this dragon- I could not tell who engaged the Jace was Rakan, Rakan died so quickly. <laughs> I know, right? It was, I think it was Rakan that engaged. The recent Q misses, so Ithaca is able to kill the dragon, so he's using an ultimate to try to get in. Look at that movement speed, the two-man sleep. Okay, this could be huge. Okay, that's one kill. Both members are really low. Jinx with the quickness is going in and will get it. All right, so Ithaca is able to, to grab the dragon and three more kills for, for once again, the trade of Sandbag. We give you Sandbag, we get <laughs> dragon and three kills. But... Use uh, the sacrificial deer. I mean, <laughs> yes. <coughs> I was going to say sacrificial lamb, but deer works better, I suppose. <laughs> this is, uh, you know, he's making it work, you know, he's playing, I guess, you know, some jungles, you know. Oh my like, goodness, Jace is what? so bonkers. Oh, and he still dies. Did he die from the first strike proc? Does that do damage? I don't know. I think he died from the, the Ignite. Ignite. It was probably the Ignite. It just, like, the first strike little proc made it look like that's what killed him, but regardless, 5-0-3. Yeah, 5 0 and 3 at 14 minutes. Oh, 40. Uh, Jace is looking a lot like the Jinx from last game. Sure. Yeah, I mean, even Jinx this team. game is strong. And, uh. Eli getting a bit overzealous, but has the support from Man Walrus. And Sandbag is around. Oh, we're about to get a little bit of a fight. Uh, Reaper will fall. Ziri and Rakan are around, but it looks like they're just gonna go for the real field instead. Wait, that's dumb. The Ziri doesn't have vision of that pink ward, does she? Oh, she did. Okay. I was about to be like, she can just kill the pink ward with her two autos. That's kind of ridiculous. Oh, okay. Oh, that was. Uh, oh my gosh. She used her nifty one through walls ability and just lost all of her health because of the eggs. So. Wow, that was a Jinx auto and a Jace empowered Q, and she almost died. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of crazy as far as things go. And I mean, Sandbag putting down the Rift Herald, I think it was about to go away, and that's why he put it down. But it should be able to get the charge on that second second mid tower, the inner tower. Looks like you know at this point, if you're Zaga, you'll take it. You uh, have your mid pushed up, you can roam around and join your team. Corky does have the package, so Inter may uh, use the opportunity to start a fight. I wouldn't advise it. Lozaga will one-shot you. I think Lozaga is about to back for a second item. I think he has to be right in the bridge line of that, because he's been out of base for a bit or two now. Oh, yeah. This is probably going to be his Muramana. Mm -hmm. And we have items coming through for most people. Well, not everybody can get their Mythic as quickly as Jace. As uh, Jinx finishes the Kraken Slayer, Sundra for Jack, Trinity Force for Zeri, a Gore Drinker for uh, Lee Sin. This is, uh, and our supports, you know, they uh, have to wait a little bit longer. 
<laughs> they have their boots, that's all they need anyways, right? <laughs> yeah, they, they get to run. <laughs> but as a, we are joking about supports, but you know, with how effectively Azeroth has been on this roam, I do say that, you know, with his boots, he's been putting in the work. Mm -hmm. For sure, and I mean, oh, he just finished his mythic. Yeah, that's the <laughs> Shirelia's right there. Mm. They have a lot of movement speed. <laughs> Albany, Albany has a lot of movement speed going on. I mean, Zeri is going to be fast because of her passive to begin with, and then Rakan with the quickness, and now the Shirelia's. Oh, yeah. Their team is very mobile. Everybody's moving. Yeah, they are. I mean, I guess that's, that's League of Legends these days, you know? Very true, and Manlar is coming a little bit too far forward. Is trying to get Wombo comboed. He will survive at the moment. Had to blow his flash, but... Mm. I suppose in the respect of things, it was probably worthwhile. Rakan did ult there. Yeah, that's the power of the uh, aftershock right there. You know, a glacial augment not a may not have survived. You know? <laughs> Proxy and Jax. <laughs> there is coming oh, yeah, up, though. Do we think Jax wins that 2v1? There's a chance. He did, he did just get Sunder. He has... Oh, he didn't have much mana, but um, oh, oh, it's not looking like... Oh, oh he, has, he has five. He doesn't win it, but he can outplay it. He did. All right, Sandbag survives. That's kind of big. Although it is... He will have to back before he can come into the dragon fight. I mean, Shen does have his ultimate and TP, so there's no way he doesn't come. Lazaga is maybe a tad bit too far forward. Uh, yep, yes he is. Okay. Big shutdown over to Lee Sin. That's important. Mythica is on this Drake. They're just trying to rush it down before Albany comes. Rush it down, which might end up being a mistake. We'll see in a moment. Uh, yeah, it does look like it will be that. Sandbag still trying to go for it. I don't think there's much you can do. No, there isn't. But, uh oh. Be on, Ron. You're a little bit too far forward. Not the best. He's TP. stuck in no man's land here. I don't think you outplayed this one, buddy. But maybe. He might just be able to run away. Unless Rakan is Australia's. He has the ult. Oh, yeah. There's the charm. Place your augment. He is not good out of that one, that's for sure. Yeah. And he holds on to his flash because he knows he's dead there. Which, you know, you, you get one. You get one, Eli Ron. And, uh... It's alright, we forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> the the lead that I think I had has now very quickly dwindled. Only 300 gold ahead now. <laughs> oh, Jinx almost killed Corky right there. Corky is very, very low. Ooh, wow, oh my I see Cloud's almost able to take out Nidor. Enter. Enter. Oh, I get it. Yeah, it's like enter. Oh, I was like, thinking like, like my enter, like the, game. the enter key. The uh, enter, I suppose that works too. I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't know, maybe we'll have to ask him. You think he'll give us an interview? <laughs> what does your name mean? But... Who are you? <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, looking at the state of this game right now, we have items coming through for... We're getting mostly into second item territory here for those who are more fed. We have our mid laners both getting their second items. And we have a mountain soul, or not mountain soul, mountain map on the table here. Which, I mean, doesn't, the, the map itself I don't think changes too much. It's pretty nice for Zeri being able to dash over those walls and use them. For her, um, what is that ability? Her, her, her W, which gets extended range of her walls. Oh, uh, for yeah. her little, like, projectile thingy? That's her W, yeah. yeah. And then she can just jump over walls, which is also really balanced. <laughs> Red team's it's, um... uh -oh. We have Manor Wars being tagged by the Lee Sin Q. He didn't take it. He's a weenie. I would have taken it. <laughs> And that's why I'm not as good as these guys. But I mean, um, he's <laughs> also not putting full lethality. Come on, you know. I don't do that. Oh well. Well, into a into a Jace. 
Imagine a full lethality Lee in into the chase. He just takes one Q and then just gets into one shot just like by auto attacks. Like, uh, I don't know. But, yeah, you, you know, it's more fun. You know, the game ends quicker for you, you to win oh, or lose. I, really bad. <laughs> I mean, I guess so. Eli Ron is able to be taken out by D-dubs. A little bit too far forward. He does yeah, win those it's... trades against the ja uh, the Shen, but not when uh, the Shen is friends. Uh oh. Gaga, run away. Yeah. Yeah, I think Corky has more friends than Shen. But, uh, <laughs> Shen brought one friend, Corky brought two. And either way, two Ithaca members die. And this gold lead is. They st Ithaca still has a little bit of a lead. You know, they've lost their 2,000 gold lead that they had. Now the gold's around even a little bit over 400 gold to Ithaca. But. I do have to be careful. Shen does have Stand United. Yeah, the uh, Dragon is coming up in a minute now, so you would expect to see some vision get put towards bot side. There's one ward on from both sides. So, nothing in the pit yet. People, we have Eli Ron heading down. Hopefully he doesn't get overzealous and push far, too far up like he did last time. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Yeah, I think as long as he gets his wave going, that's all he needs to do. But what really needs to happen is I see his clouds needs to leave this top lane. He needs to oh, go yeah. towards that drag. Because, I think he heard you. Uh, he did hear me. He probably... Thanks, Tenzin. But um, <laughs> uh, um, he needs to get towards that dragon so they don't give up the soul point to Albany. Because, I mean, I mean, arguably, fighting for those drakes is eventually what caused Ithaca's like, last stand last game because I gave up the soul point and had to fight for their lives every five minutes otherwise I just lost and most of the time even though they get the drinks they lose out and all the objectives and kills and stuff that happened after so we, we have a little bit of a death bush going on but if it could spots it out Corby has package also oof that big rocket did so much those big and ones are not cute it looks like he's like going Corby. for like a death dance third item um, yeah, that's... Why can't this champ build whatever he wants? Like, I joked about Jinx, but Corky actually can just build whatever he wants. Yeah, and I mean, it looks like Ithaca might even be looking at this Baron instead of, instead of this third Drake. Trying to give it up. There goes the Corky package and the Shirelli is trying to do it. Ithaca's thinking the Baron, okay, so he might see a little bit of a Baron fight. Albany does know that Ithaca's here. They have a word on him. Ithaca's all five members in the already there. Lucan is on his way, and everyone in in the game has important cooldowns, except for the Shrelias. That's the one cooldown I'm noticing that he doesn't have. He does use the ultimate to get in. Baron at 1,000 HP is taken down by the by the top laner. Eli Ron gets a down, but he's chased from the Lily, and now he's just running for life, trying to get out. Two members have fallen. There's about to be a third. as sandbag tries to run away, and he does not get away because he's okay. So I suppose you know, looking at the bright side for Ithaca. They got the Baron. Is it worth it, though? I mean, that's an objective that Albany can't get for five and a half minutes. But, you know, Baron's supposed to you know, get you some towers and you the game. They get a Baron and then lose the tower. Yes, they're stalling. They're stalling for the Jax. The Jax just hit his second item. He's, getting, he's working towards that third item now. Oh. Uh, that's the first strike we're talking about. All right, there's yeah. first strike. Thank you, Jace. Uh, Lazaga picking up. Rakan, who's just a little bit too low. <laughs> yeah, that two came from downtown. <laughs> it very much so good. You watch Zary take red buff. <laughs> Exciting. <laughs> and yeah, that is a death dance coming through for Inter. Yeah. Interesting. I yeah. Oh, never mind. Well, he sold it. <laughs> he thought it was a bad idea. Ah, <laughs> uh, see, I think that's a smarter decision for finishing the Death Dance. Buying just even the, the team at. I think that's a good idea. Getting the bonus AoE damage on all of his rockets is going to be kind of huge. I mean, I, I would think at this point, one of his big rockets half health clouds. Like, I would. Oh, yeah. Clouds is in fear. Oh, at yeah. At all times. With the Titanic Hydra coming from D-Dub and the Tiamat coming from Inter, there's a lot of AoE. And 
Yeah, there is. We have going in. And then this going out. Been. <laughs> I mean, and because of that, I think I might be able to grab this top tower. I mean, they do have that Baron buff to try to do it, and Eli Ron is opting into this 1v3 for some reason. Oh my god, he's winning it somehow. I mean, not for very long. Oh no, you can do it, Eli Ron. No, he can't. It's okay, but Ithaca, they're using this Baron buff. They're on the inhibitor tower with their Baron they buff. They are using the Baron there we go. I don't necessarily know if they want to take the inhibitor just because, uh, yeah, just because the gold, they don't want to lose the income. But I mean, they just got two towers for the, the price of their top laner. I mean, you know, that's... There, are, there are worse trades to be had. There are worse yeah. trades to be had for sure. <laughs> um, I'll accept it. I'll give it the seal of approval from me. There you go. There's the Jared seal of approval. But, um, shut down. All across Albany. Oh yeah, it's we gotta get those. <laughs> that, that's the goal. Yeah, that is the goal right now. Is stop the Dragon Soul, which spawns in two minutes, and grab those bounties, which are looking very, very, very juicy. And at this point, is I think a strong enough to win these fights, though. Every I, member from the side of Albany has two items. And Ithaca also has that, so this is, we, we, I think that they can, I think this is time for Ithaca to, you know, make their play. If they play it right, I mean, they need to be careful of those quirky rockets and the dumb Zeri who built a Titanic Hydra ADC, by the way, but. <laughs> that's dumb. I don't like that. I think it's cool. I think it's definitely shouldn't work, but it's cool. Not, well, yeah, no, I appreciate that, but it's like... It makes me mad. She's an ADC. She just should not be building a tank item. Like, all this stupid Kog'Ma with... Well, I played against a Kog'Ma in our league game last night that went... What did he go? Oh, it made me so mad. Was it the he tank went... Kog'Ma? Is it Chemtech? No, no, he went Bloodthirst or whatever, the Shield Bow into wit's end into like a spear visage and i was oh, just like what the I'm heck and he's just like here. unkillable and he's just one shot it was just not fair he also had a lulu and a karma but oh <laughs> but oh, that was yeah. it was it was a loss if anyone saw that game last night that was um, that yeah, was that's how you get those uh what is it uh serpent's fang yeah well we didn't have anyone to build them but that game also went really poorly for a lot of reasons but Dragon is spawning. This is soul point for you, Albany. If they have to do whatever they can to try to contest it, as that mountain soul will be very, very, very huge. The dragon's around 5,000 HP. Uh, there goes Lazaga, I suppose. Lazaga's dead. And now they're looking in. Shen is down there at the fight. Jax has a little bit of a flank. Important to note. Dragon now 2,000 HP down to 1,000. It is smited and killed by Lee Sin, so that is Dragon Soul over to Albany. Now, Gresh and Ithaca running for their lives, Sin, Eli Ron is 1 HP and now dead. And now, there go the rest of the team. Jinx now running away, same with Man Walrus. Man Walrus will fall. There goes Cloud. Ace Dragon Soul, probably at least an inhibitor for Albany. Oh, man. And we, we talked previously about um, Ithaca needing to just play better than Albany with this team comp. I mean, they did, and, respectively, in the early game. In the early game, they most certainly did. But I think that um, overconfidence became a bit of an issue for Eli Ryan and Lazaga. Lazaga went on a flank, and the entire team collapsed. It was blown up, and Eli Ryan was caught many times out on the side, you know, taking fights that, you know, were, um, I think, questionable. Mm -hmm. Questionable, indeed. But, I mean, Game's still not done yet. I mean, through all this stuff that we're saying, there's still only, I mean, less than a 3,000 gold lead for, uh-oh. Oh, Ooh, wow. uh, oh very God. fortunate that that rocket missed, that is for sure. Yeah, that big one would have been devastating. Curtains for Lilia. <laughs> curtains indeed. So what happened to the, to the late game Jax making the, the Shen quake in his boots. Hold on, he's, only, he's not at three items. Yet. He's building a, a whip um, Hold on, he can still power spike. He hasn't died ten times yet. <laughs> uh, I don't think the Shen will be boot quaking. 
Yeah, oh. I don't know if his singular boot will quake yet. It may <laughs> not come. He did build an Athenus Chains also to have that single target resist, which... Oh, well, who did he put it on? Can we see who he put it on? I don't, I don't know how that item works. I'm guessing Jace. I would assume so as well. Yeah, nobody else I mean, is that much of a He's not going to put it on the Lilia. The Lilia is the only source of AP and... Yeah. Our boy Sandbag is not super ahead, at least at the moment. Yeah, as of now he's got his uh, two items, which are you know, probably items, but not enough to you know shred through a full tank shan at the moment. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Albany is baiting the Baron. They are, they are but Corky's on that top air tower. Just oh look, I, I, this is looking like boot quaking to me. Uh, I'm not seeing much boot quaking. I'm seeing Shen running. Yeah. I don't know, like, Shen's just not autoing. He's, okay, but well, maybe, maybe he's doing a little <laughs> bit of damage, and Ithaca's pushing up towards these inhibitors now. I mean, that's an objective bounty. I mean, they're getting flanked by three members of Albany, but, I mean, they got the one bounty, and they have the wave in for the second one. Uh oh, oh okay, I'm glad you run that way. I mean, we take your inhibitor tower, we give you sandbag. But, um, it's looking as the fight is now coming in. Shen and Rakan in the middle of the fight. D-Dubs goes unstoppable with Man Walrus falling. And now it is a 3v5. I mean, Ithaca could look maybe towards his inhibitor, as I think you Albany should go towards his Baron. But, I mean, I think that's their only option here. Try to trade out. Yeah, either one decides to stay on the bot side. And, uh, you know, if he can't win the game, he'll bully this Shen in late game. And kill the inhibitor, I guess. Look at the lamp. The lamp is putting in work. I mean, Eli Ron, okay, so he does take the inhibitor, that's kind of big, and now he's trying to 1v1 the Shen, and okay, I guess he does, even with that, like, negative mana, but, all right. Yeah, he... But it's he does know now, you know, yeah. he is in danger, as the entire team is running away from Baron. Actually, I don't think they care much about Eli Ron. Never mind, they do. They, what do you they, mean? I, <laughs> what do you mean? They're running right at him. <laughs> I was, I was... I was thinking that they're, you know, gonna push mid lane, but you know, they uh decide to cut off Eli Ron's escape. Uh, but I think he's not adjusting this for Eli Ron. Yeah. Uh, and he there he goes. He, he's still I can hear Yakking Sacks in the distance. Ooh. But he <laughs> does fall, I just sprayed myself in the water bottle. He does fall eventually. I mean that was a pretty big stall. Like that was a solid thirty yeah, seconds I, off of Baron. That's funny, funny, but uh, pushing mid lane. Um, yeah. It's okay. That's you know, they got the kill. They did, they did, they did. 300 gold, and Jax has hit his three item power space. So I better see some boot quaking. Just saying. <laughs> Even though Shen's a full item up, I better see lots of boot quaking. <laughs> but yeah, you know that Wisdom's gonna tear right through that. Three items, four items. Oh my goodness, he has four items. This he does cool. have four items. I mean, Albany's pushing, going for the bot inhibitor tower, and they don't even have the outer, the inner. And oh man, that was a big package onto onto Sandbag. And Lazaga is now in his GA, and the fight has only barely started. Leaves him kicked in the middle of the team, but here goes the fight. I mean, all these all grouped up. It could look very big. There's a resurrection coming through, and Jinx is pouring out damage under this team. No one is falling yet. Actually, Zeri is first to fall. Followed by Corky. It's gonna really turn this fight around. Holy moly, that Jinx damage was incredible. And that is three kills. Okay, three kills to Ithaca. Kind of big. Jax is, Jax is TPing for the Nexus Tower, by the way. But, but Shen is now alive still, and they might be looking for him. Although, Man Morris is, I have, I don't know, I'm kind of confused with what's going on. Ithaca is kind of, Ithaca's looking for the end. It even keeps up at the moment. Shen's ulting in back for the base, where the Eli Ron is falling the Tower. Oh, the Shen all got cancelled! Man Warren sacrificing himself for the good of the Nexus Tower, and now Shen, Shen's even TPing. Wow, that was a big fight. That fight won from Ithaca, got the the inhibitor. I mean, they killed three that's members. That's a late game drink. That's a, it's a late game drink. James got the Nexus Tower. That's a Nexus Tower and two inhibitors, and now they can just run straight towards the Elder. I don't know if they can do it, per se. I mean, I guess they have a few seconds left on timers. They're all low HP, though, so this could be a poor decision. Unless they do it quickly, but hey, I mean, then again, late game jinx, right? They might as well try it. 
Yeah. Like, yeah. Giant run, might as well do it. Corky's keeping in the dragon for 3,000 health. Dragon will fall into this enemy dragon. Now they have to run for the hills. And oh my goodness, Corky damage. All right. 50 seconds for Jace. Don't think they can end. They don't have any ways for it. Ithaca has Elder. On arguably two of their strongest members with the being the Jax. Yes. That's good. That's you a turnaround. I that you know. You said that Jinx may not be worth giving up for Zeri and Corky, but that team fight may say otherwise. I uh, yeah. No, she uh, there was some damage output that fight. That is for sure. There was yeah. I uh, having Kraken, is Beauty Edge and Renon. Ooh. Yeah, so I suppose yeah, we're both I'm wrong at the moment. Too. So we still haven't seen any boot clicking, but we <laughs> still have time. Eventually, this Jack will make. <laughs> Eventually, whether it's an hour and a half in, the Jack will make the Shen quake in his boots. His boot, his single maybe boot. next season. <laughs> <laughs> maybe next season. Uh, maybe they'll buff Jack's next patch. Who knows? But I mean, Ithaca isn't even is even on the forefront right now. I mean, down ten kills, down a thousand gold. But I mean, at seventy thousand gold, it doesn't really matter all that much. Everyone's at four or five items at this point. Well, Except minus the supports, but supports never never four. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, it's looking pretty good. I mean, you have the carry champions of Ithaca with, or three of them, two of the three carry champions of Ithaca with, with the elder buff still up. And I mean, I'm assuming it still has a half, maybe a third left. I don't know how long the buff goes. I can't really see it. Or I don't know the yeah, time. Yeah, I mean, either, you should have, they most certainly still have for at least this next team fight, if it breaks out. And this team fight, we know, will most likely decide the game if Ithaca wins it. If Ithaca wins, they win the game. Yeah, I don't think that... Unless they win it very healthily and they can go dive next power to go very well. But here goes the fight starts. Mamal is the first one to get taunted up and taken very, very low and chucked out of the fight. It Watch the conflictness. That's going to be where we're going to have to watch. He's going to have to hit that on both sands. On I Clouds and Lazaga, that's his goal. Hit them both, but they're hitting the towers. That's not missing. There goes the quickness out of the Jinx, who is oh all destroyed by that first rookie. And there's Wakanda Fall. He's on around, taken very low, and will get killed by the Jason because now having to run for the hills. They got the kill, they got the next tower, now they have to run. The Corky damage is way too strong, and now it's just Manwaris against the world. And if he had Elder, he wins this fight. And wait, he might win this fight, anyways. Is this. Oh. Well, it was almost a Zaro match, but I mean. Okay. I don't think that Albany has the wave right now to end. I don't think they have the wave. They have 30 seconds left for Jinx, 35 for Jax. Maybe they do. I mean, it depends how quickly they take these objectives. I don't. They have wonderful wave too with this Zeri Titanic Hydra combo. How does Zeri go with taking objectives? That's not something I know very well, but they are ping for the end. All right, 15 seconds for the Jinx, 20 for the top in the jungle, 22 for the support, and 20, 22 also for Lozaga. So it is. Okay, 20 seconds left. Great. Five for Jinx. Five for Jinx this is a big, 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 big race. This could be, this could be killer. If this is goes go south for Albany, they lose the game right here. But there's one Nexus Tower left. They're not pushing it for it. Corky package Ooh. in. And, oh my God, Corky damage. It looks like it's just done. The respawn timers don't come in in time, and that is game set and match for the University of Albany. Ooh, oh, that was man. an intense ending. Oh my goodness. Ooh. That was that was a really good ending. I mean. The game looked pretty dire. At one point, Ithaca brought it back, and then that one little bit of an overstay into their base to end that game up. That's it's a really it's a really unfortunate way to go, but I'd say that was a banger of a game. That was that was miraculous. I they were in both bases in less than like two minutes. That was wow. I we said this series would be a bit of a rivalry, and I think it's brewing. I think this I. Is, I, yeah, no, I agree. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, I would. I mean, we've already talked to him like what three times in our careers. We've we've casted this ser casted these two teams. But well, I'm assuming we'll see it again if the ECAC goes how it is. Because like looking at the ECAC, this is probably the toughest team that we'll see in the tournament. One of the two toughest is like these these guys RPI. I believe there's one other school that was very powerful, but or very strong as far as things goes. But. I don't know. We'll see him again. I know we'll see him again, and I'm excited to see him again. And thank you guys all for tuning in today. This was week one of the spring split of ECAC. Uh, you're here with uh, Jared and Mark, and we'll see you guys next time. Peace out.